How big should my leopard gecko's tail be? What is going on guys? My name is Frank, this is Toothless, and in this video we will be discussing how thick a leopard gecko's tail actually should be. So as you can see, this leopard gecko right here is a black knight, but he also has a pretty chunky tail on him. Is that normal? And what should a leopard gecko's tail look like? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm happy with the size of his tail. That's a good sign to me. What does a leopard gecko use the thickness of its tail for? In a funny discussion that we had with Wally Kern from Supreme Gecko, we talked about if leopard geckos had superpowers, what would it be? One of our followers commented, tail slam. And I absolutely agree, because look at this beefy, chunky, beautiful thickness of a tail. Some people think it looks kind of weird or funky, but to me, who's always liked leopard geckos, I've never had a problem with it. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I think it matches their robust body a little bit. And that's something that we're going to talk about in today's video. Different geckos are built differently. Some geckos are going to be a little bit more streamlined, like this. As you can see, this is one of our bell albino leopard geckos, it's not as thick and chunky as the other leopard gecko that I was just showing. The other leopard gecko is a little bit shorter in body length. This one's a little bit longer. The other leopard gecko is a little bit more stout and bulkier, like more muscular and more fatty. And this one is a little bit more thin and skinny. So different leopard gecko species and different leopard geckos in general will promote different body types. We can just see the thickness of her tail in comparison to the last gecko is close, but not as chunky. Now, mind you, every gecko that I show today, I am not worried about. But let's start with the gecko that we have that has the thinnest tail and work our way up to the gecko that we have that has the largest tail. And let's taco about it. Get that taco? Because we're talking about thickness and girth. Okay. On the thinner side, we have a Turkmenicus female. And if you don't know what Turkmenicus is, it's one of the species of leopard gecko that we work with in the industry. And it is completely cross-breedable with Macularis, which is the common species, which was the first two geckos I showed earlier in this video. But this is a Turkmenicus female. And as you can see, her tail is a little bit skinny. Now it's not too crazy and believe it or not, it was actually skinnier than this not too long ago. This is a breeding female. This girl currently is going through breeding stages right now. So not too long ago, I noticed that her tail was getting skinnier and skinnier and it was actually about, I would say another 25% skinnier than this even. Once it gets to the level where it's a little bit more skinny than this, that's where I kind of become concerned. And so I stopped breeding her at that point and I started just double checking and keeping a closer eye on her to make sure that she was getting the proper food, calcium and vitamins and she's been beefing up since. So sometimes it just requires a little bit of de-stressing the gecko. And I don't keep my males and females together, so there's really no reason for them to be stressed. But if I am introducing a male to a female constantly to try to get her to breed, then it might stress the female out. So I gave this female a break, and even though she was ovulating and beginning to lay eggs, I did not repair her, and I did not reintroduce a male to her for the last couple of weeks, and she is filling out nicely now. She's probably actually got a couple eggs in her. There you can see some bright red ovulations. Oh, and she peed on me, which is a little bit more common with the Turkmenicus geckos. They're a little bit more feisty than the Macularis ones. So let's just clean that up real quick. So I normally just take some diluted vinegar. You could just buy vinegar from the store, mix it like 50% vinegar, 50% water, and just spray it onto whatever surface the gecko happened to vomit on or urate on or poop on, because to me that helps kill a little bit more germs and bacteria. And then I'll usually wipe it down and then I will let it sit so the vinegar can dissolve those germs and bacteria and do what it does. We aren't going to bug this little girl and look underneath her anymore. As you can see, that's kind of what caused her to pee on us. And that was a little bit stressful to her. So that's a perfect example. A normal gecko is not going to be stressed out when you're doing that to her. But a female that might be pregnant or going through the stages of gravidness, which, you know, is pregnancy in reptiles that bear eggs, they might 
be a little bit more emotional or moody. Most of my geckos are not, but again, the Turkmenicus species is a little bit more feisty of a species than the Macularis. So you could kind of see anyway, the bulkiness and the rotundness of her body kind of shows that she has some eggs in there. Her tail was actually as skinny as the base of her tail. And so whenever people say, hey, my leopard gecko's tail is skinny, can you look at this for me? That's the first thing I mentioned and asked them is, is it skinnier than the base of their tail? So you see the base of her tail right there? That's about a centimeter, maybe slightly over a centimeter, so maybe like half an inch. So if the whole tail is half an inch, that means that she is beginning to absorb all the nutrients that are stored in her tail. Because that's what leopard geckos do. They store fat, protein. I'm actually not a scientist, so I don't know what they store in there, but they store nutrients in there so that they can absorb that nutrients into their body whenever they go through dry spells of not having food or like in the wild when they go through brumation, which is hibernation for reptiles, and they actually stop eating completely for three or four months, whatever that time period might be, that they are hibernating in the wild, waiting for the temperature to come back up. Oh man, there we go. Fully pee on me, girl, fully, let it go, let it go. Oh man, a good dookie right there. That's a good one. So we're gonna put her away. Oh, she's got another one lined up. She's got another one lined up. We're gonna take her to the shower, wash her off. Okay guys, so that gecko, I just took her to wash her off in the shower. She pooped on me like three massive stools and she just really didn't seem to be liking the camera. So I put her away. I don't wanna stress her out anymore. I need to make sure the cat doesn't jump onto the screen of the roaches cause I don't think it'll break it cause it's hot glue, but I'm always like trying to prevent myself from extra work that I need to do. So where were we? Talking about the tail of the leopard geckos. So getting back to the skinniness of the tail, whenever anyone is concerned and they send me a picture or they ask me a question, I always check to see if their tail is skinnier than the base of their tail, which is about a half inch. If the whole tail is only a half inch thick, then that's telling me that the gecko either has parasites or it has just stopped eating. Because when a gecko stops eating, it begins to absorb all of that nutrients from its fattened tail into its main body. So it can maintain muscle, fat, girth, it can maintain all of that body size. So it's really, really easy, and this is one of the things I love about leopard geckos, you could tell if something is wrong by the fact that their tail gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And just because a tail gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier does not necessarily mean you have a big problem on your hands. There's a couple reasons why the tail might get skinnier. All leopard geckos have natural parasites and bacteria in their gut that helps break down their food in their stomach and intestines area, if those parasites and bacteria multiply to such a degree to where the gecko is having a tough time actually digesting its food and it's vomiting its food or it's having green poop or diarrhea and the tail starts to get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier because it's not absorbing any of that new nutrients into its body, then you just want to keep an eye on that gecko. Not all the time is that going to become a big deal and I get a lot of these questions, you know, my gecko is pooping green, my gecko has a runny stool my gecko's tail is getting skinnier. I wouldn't worry about it too much right off the bat. But if it progresses for a week or two weeks and the gecko still has runny stool, still has green stool, still is getting skinnier, then you wanna analyze it on a little bit of a deeper level. Because sometimes, just like people, geckos go through moods. I always use this girl as an example now. We showed her earlier on in the video. This is our bell albino leopard gecko. And you can see the thickness of her tail is perfectly fine. But just about a month and a half ago, she started eating again when she had not eaten for, get this, six months. This girl did not eat for six months. She had green stool, but it wasn't runny. And so that's why I was considering parasites because I know parasites can cause green stool, but a lot of times with parasites, you're gonna get runny stool as well. And for whatever reason, this girl just did not wanna eat. I can't remember too much if she was vomiting a lot, because again, this was six months ago where this girl did not eat. And her tail was definitely skinnier or just as skinny as the base of her tail. And she was beginning to wither away to the point where I bought a microscope and I was going to do my own flora test or poop 
test so that the poops that she was pooping that was green, I was gonna put it under a microscope, see what parasite or bacteria was infecting her gut, not allowing her to absorb that nutrients. But guess what? After six months of hunger strike, she finally went back on food with no other treatment plans by me, except just continually offering her food. And one day she just began to eat again. Now it is breeding season here and we did just go through brumation. So could brumation or breeding season have caused her to go off of food for that long? I'd say it's a definite possibility. Most of our geckos here, almost 100% of them do not brumate and almost 100% of them do not go on hunger strike. But there are a few that will go on hunger strikes for maybe the period of like a week or two and then they'll go back on food. Nothing like I ever experienced with this girl. This girl really scared me. She went off of food for six months. But during that time when I was preparing a treatment plan and just keeping an eye on her and making sure things didn't get too bad, eventually out of nowhere she started eating again. That is what the gecko's tail is for. If they ever need to go for a long period of time without eating, they will absorb the nutrients that is already stored in their tail and they will use it to keep them alive for months and months on end. There's not a lot of test to suggest how long the nutrients in a gecko's tail could keep it alive for, but I'll tell you this gecko barely ate anything for six months, like barely, maybe a mealworm or two every now and then, and she happened to survive no problem. A lot of people get really, really worried about their gecko not eating in one week or two weeks or even a month, but let me use subject A as another example here, six months months without eating and her tail only got as skinny as about a half inch. It wasn't dreadfully skinny. It was definitely skinny, concerningly skinny, but not dreadfully skinny. Unfortunately, sometimes you see really bad pictures of geckos that like have not eaten in a year or got any care in a year or they had cryptosporidiosis, which is a parasite that is very, very difficult to treat in leopard geckos and unfortunately will kill the reptile or leopard gecko in most cases. That tail will get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier as that parasite eats all of the nutrition that the gecko is getting and does not allow the gecko to get any of that nutrition. But geckos survive so long. They are so hardy. Their body fights so hard against starvation. And so that's the beauty of this tail, guys. That's what I want to highlight. The beauty of this tail is this gecko can literally go months without food or water and it not even be a compromising or a life-threatening issue. Now, I'm not promoting that. I promote that we should feed our geckos on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis at minimum. That's my practice here. We feed two times a week, medium-sized meals, or you could feed one times a week, a large size meal, and you'll see that gecko's tail will continue to stack up and stack up fat and nutrients to keep it alive. That's just our routine. But I just wanted to say that because in the worst cases, leopard geckos can definitely go over six months without food if they needed to survive. Just so that you don't have to worry when your gecko goes a month or month and a half without eating, I would not worry about that if you check everything off the list that you're providing for that gecko. Proper heat, you are supplying food, the stools do not have parasites in them, the gecko has a safe place to feel secure and to hide, and check to see if it's breeding season or brumation season. Some geckos are known to go off of food for a little bit during brumation season, which is over the cold months, or during breeding season, which for most geckos is from December through about March to April. And it doesn't mean they'll go completely off of food, it just means that they might reduce their caloric intake by a noticeable amount and that's what gets a lot of people worried. So that was a gecko with what I would consider to be a normal sized tail. A little bit thicker than the base of the actual leopard gecko's tail. Now let's take a look at a gecko that actually has a little bit of a chunky tail. So this is Fuega. She's one of our beautiful tangerine breeder girls right now, and she is going through breeding. She's kind of closing in on the end of her season, but looking at her tail, even though she's been breeding, you can see the thickness of that tail. Like if she needed a power slam move, boom, boom. Like if she was an animated character cartoon or something, she could definitely use that tail and that thick to whack her enemies around. And that's what I love about leopard geckos. They're able to store nutrients in their tail, absorb that nutrients into their body when need be, regenerate that tail whenever and if it falls off. And they're just so cute. I mean, look at that. 
they lick everything. That's called the lick test. So leopard geckos sense the world through their tongue. And whenever they get close to something that they need to recognize what it is, they will lick it. See, see that lick? So pretty cool. So anyway, this girl has what I would consider to be a fairly chunky tail. Even though during breeding season, females will oftentimes lose a little bit of tail girth, the tail will get a little bit skinnier because they are absorbing extra calcium and nutrients into their body to develop and make those eggs as they're laying them two times a month for about three to four months. That takes a lot out of the girl's body. A lot of times you will see their tails getting skinnier, but again, I would not worry too much as long as you're providing the correct food, water, and nutrients for the gecko, they'll be perfectly fine. You know, this is what they're designed to do. They are designed to reproduce and multiply. But I just wanted to show you a tail that I am happy with. I am happy with the size of this tail. And you can see it kind of bows out like a pear, right? Pears kind of have that shape where it starts skinny and then gets wide. It's the same with leopard geckos. The base of their tail starts really skinny really down low right here at the base and then it gets thicker and wider as that tail goes on and then gets skinny again towards the tip of the tail looks beautiful just like a carrot a true carrot tail this size thickness is good for a female that is breeding or it's okay for a gecko that is a male or a gecko that is not breeding. So typically I try to keep the tails no fatter than this. If the tail gets wider and bigger than this, that's when I might put the gecko on a little bit of a diet. I'll only give the gecko a little bit of worms per week or maybe like 25% of the worms that I would be giving a normal gecko. Unless that gecko is going through breeding, then I might keep the intake the same. But Next, I'm going to show you one of our fattest tail leopard geckos. And even though she's breeding right now, she has so much nutrients in her tail, I'm not concerned about her eating a lot. She has fresh calcium and vitamins regularly, filled for her bowl two times a week fresh. But food-wise, I only sprinkle a couple worms a week instead of a couple dozen like I normally do. And I'll show you why here. All right, so we got a couple chunky monkeys up in this business over here. And this is probably the chunkiest monkey that we have. Look at that tail. Her tail is so big, it almost blends into the size of her body. So this girl, even though she's egg laying right now and producing eggs for us, I'll look at her her little tongue as she's struggling to climb. I just noticed that they do that. When they're struggling to climb a little bit, they'll be like and open their mouth a little, it's kind of cute. There's that tail, look at the thickness of that tail. First of all, the base of her tail is even wider than the base of most leopard geckos tails that we see. When the tail gets that thick and girthy, here's what you're gonna begin to notice. Armpit fat. It's kind of hard to pick out and to show you on the camera because she doesn't actually have that bad armpit fat right now. But when I move her little elbow, right behind the arm right there, they will develop these bulbous, kind of bubble-like sacs. And you can kind of see it right there a little bit. It becomes a bulbous protruding sac that just stores extra nutrients or extra fat even past the tail. And so it's pretty crazy. Once the tail is maxed out, its armpits are like, okay, now we need to store stuff. So it's pretty crazy. That's how you know you're going too far. Like I said, with the orange gecko that I showed last, that's about the thickest I like to let the tail get before the gecko goes on a diet. Now, even though this gecko is on a diet and she's literally only eating a few worms a week, she's still maintaining her tail thickness. Why is that? Again, these geckos are masterfully designed for survival and for low caloric intake. They are almost too well designed to put on a diet because even when you put these guys on a diet they just keep storing up that fat in that tail month after month after month it's very hard to get rid of the fat of that tail unless you were all out just not feeding your gecko and i've never really attempted that where i stopped feeding the gecko completely but like with this girl for the last couple of months she's only been eating a few worms a week and you can still see how thick that gorgeous luscious tail is that matches my shirt look at that that 
tie-dye. She's, she's a tie-dye blizzard. Beautiful girl though. Hopefully produce some beautiful Het Diablo Blanco babies for us this year. All right, we're gonna go with one more chunky monkey. And I don't know if it's a blizzard thing, but this is another blizzard and it is another midnight blizzard. So shout out to AZ Leos, we got this girl from him and we really wanted to take her into our collection because I love the purple blizzards, guys. Blizzard was one of my favorite jeans when I first started with leopard geckos, Blizzard and Snow. Because they're easy to work with, they're easy to find, and they just look so stunningly different than a normal leopard gecko. I'm just amazed by it. And so it's fun genetics to mess around with. But again, very, very thick base of the tail, and also very, very thick body of the tail. You can just see that it almost looks like a leaf, like how a leaf gets thicker and then skinnier. Typically, you want to stop it before it gets this thick. But again, I'm not worried about a thick tail, especially if the gecko is breeding. It just means that the gecko is going to have more nutrients than it needs for longer periods of time. Now this girl is notorious for attitude, so I don't know if that's a blizzard thing also. She's not showing it right now, but sometimes you'll just be holding her and out of nowhere she'll just be like, getting ready to bite you, it's so funny. She'll turn real slow and give you a chance to get away, but if you don't get away, most geckos don't realize that your hand is something that it can bite. Like they'll try to bite the air or they'll try to bite your other hand as it comes down towards its face. Most geckos won't actually try to bite the hand that is supporting it as if it's a platform. But this girl, she knows. She's like, I know that's your hand. And I wouldn't be surprised because she's done it before. If she tries to bite the surface that she's standing on, which just happens to be my hand right now. So again, beautiful gecko, gorgeous luscious tail. I don't care about that thickness of the tail. Some people might say this gecko is overweight. I don't find any real negative towards having a thicker tail, especially if it's a female and especially if it's breeding. Now there is a little bit of a theory out there that heavier set and chunky males like our big boy Zeus right here, have a little bit less ambition when it comes to breeding. I don't know if that's really proven or any of like the data to support that or just observational oral tradition by leopard gecko breeders, but it definitely is oral tradition that if the male is too chunky, he is going to potentially be a troublesome breeder. Now I do have chunky males that are not troublesome breeders. Like they're chunky and they're perfectly fine breeders. But I can tell you, this guy right here, you can see this chunky monkey, look at that tail. He will only breed one female a year. It's so, so funny and weird. He's like, okay, which one you want it to be? I'm not having you put me to all these different girls, man. I'll take one of them. And he, I literally will put him to like five or 10 different girls and he'll choose one of them, just one of them to breed with. Once I've had success with breeding him, I'm like, okay, he's ready to rock and roll. He's ready to breed more females. I'll try a different female, he won't breed her. But then I'll repair him with the female that he chose to pair with that year, and he'll pair with her. It's so, so weird. So he's just like, look dude, I'm gonna choose one girl this year and that's it. I'm a faithful man. Maybe the chunky monkeys, they're the faithful ones. Maybe there's some data that can be supportive towards that. But beautiful white and yellow gecko. I would love to take the genetics of this guy and just breed him to 10 to 15 girls in one season. But unfortunately, he'll only choose one. Fortunately for us, he has a son and that son will breed anyone. <laughs> All right guys, well what did you think? Drop a comment below with suggestions for new videos. That is where this video came from. You guys voted on our last video that you wanted to see how to set up a baby leopard gecko first. At like 48% that video came in. Well guess what, this video actually came in shortly behind that. You guys also voted about 38% for how thick should my leopard gecko's tail be. And so subscribe, ring that notification bell for our channel because that is how you will see the polls that I put out on a weekly basis to find out what videos you guys want to see. So I'll drop a list of topics, you'll get to vote, and hopefully your video will win that week.
If not, we'll hit that video on a following week because we are all about sharing wealth and knowledge and experience here. So if you like this channel, please give this video a like, comment down below, subscribe and ring that notification bell, and we will see you guys in the video. You know what I'm gonna say. Have a geeky gecko great day.